Chapter 24 Stalked, Chased, Threatened, Poisoned, etc. He should have been shocked, but he wasn't, not really. It was a sad fact of his existence as a squirrel that there was always someone, somewhere, who wanted him dead. In his short life, Ulysses had been stalked by cats, attacked by raccoons, and shot at with BB guns, slingshots, and a bow and arrow. Granted, the arrow was made of rubber, but still, it had hurt. He had been shouted at, threatened, and poisoned. He had flung ears over tail by the stream of water ensuing from a garden hose turned to full force. Once at the public picnic grounds, a small girl had tried to beat him to death with an enormous teddy bear. And last fall, a pickup truck had run over his tail. Truthfully, the possibility of getting hit over the head with a shovel didn't seem that alarming. Life was dangerous, particularly if you were a squirrel. In any case, he wasn't thinking about dying. He was thinking about poetry. That is what Tootie said he had written. Poetry. He liked the word. Its smallness, its density, the way it rose up at the ends as if it had wings. Poetry. Don't worry, said Flora. You're a superhero. This malfeasance will be stopped. Ulysses dug his claws into Flora's pajamas to keep his balance on her shoulder. Malfeasance, said Flora again. Poetry, thought Ulysses. Chapter 25, Seal Blubber. Flora's father's car seats smelled like butterscotch and ketchup, and Flora was in the back seat, where the smell of butterscotch and ketchup was the most powerful. She had a bootsy boot on with her shoebox with Ulysses in her lap, and she was feeling carsick even though the car wasn't moving yet. She was also feeling the tiniest bit overwhelmed. Things in general were pretty confusing. For instance, here was Ulysses sitting in a shoebox knowing that there was a shovel in the trunk of the car and that the man driving the car had been instructed to whack him over the head with the shovel, and the squirrel didn't look worried or afraid. He looked happy. And then there was Flora's mother, the person who had given Flora the shoebox, to protect her little friend on his journey. We'll just put the washcloth in here as a comfy blanket. She was standing at the door, smiling and waving goodbye to them, as if they weren't truly a murdered planning arch nemesis. Talk about darkness of 10,000 hands. Nothing was as it seemed. Flora looked down at the squirrel. Of course, he was not what he seemed either. And that was a good thing. An incandesto thing. Flora felt a shiver of belief of possibility pass through her. Her parents had no idea what kind of squirrel they were dealing with. Her father put the car in reverse. As he backed out of the driveway, Flora saw William Spiver standing in Tootie's front yard. He was looking up at the sky. He turned his head slowly in the direction of the car. His glasses flashed in the sun. Tootie appeared. She was waving one of the pink gloves as if it were a flag of surrender. Stop the car, she shouted. Step on the gas, Flora said to her father. She did not want to talk to Tootie, and she definitely did not want to talk to William Spiver. She didn't want to see herself reflected in his dark glasses. She had her own thoughts about the random and confusing nature of the universe. She didn't need his, too. Also, she was in a hurry. There was a murder to stop, a superhero to mentor, villains to vanquish, darkness to eradicate. She couldn't waste her time trading stupid thoughts with William Spiver. Flora Bell, shouted William Spiver almost as if he were reading her mind. I've had some interesting thoughts. He ran toward the car and fell into the bushes. 
Great Aunt Tootie, he shouted. I need your assistance. What in the world is going on, said her father. He slammed on the brakes. It's just a temporary blind boy, said Flora. And Mrs. Thickum from next door. She's his aunt. His great aunt, never mind. It doesn't make any difference. Just keep going. But it was too late. Tootie had helped William Spiver out of the bushes, and the two of them were walking toward the car. William Spiver was smiling. Hello, her father called out to them. I'm George Buckham. How do you do? Flora's father introduced himself to everyone all the time, even if the person was someone he had already met. It was an annoying and extremely persistent habit. Hello, sir, said William Spiver. I'm William Spiver, and I'd like to speak to your daughter, Flora Bell. I don't have time to talk to you right now, William Spiver, said Flora. Great Aunt Tootie, can you assist me? Will you take me to Flora's side of the vehicle? Please excuse me while I escort this extremely disturbed and neurotic child to the other side of the car, said Tootie. Certainly, certainly, said Flora's father. And then he said to absolutely no one, George Buckman, how do you do? Flora sighed. She looked down at Ulysses. Considering the human beings she was surrounded by, believing in a squirrel seemed like an interestingly reasonable plan of action. I wanted to apologize, said William Spiver, who was now standing beside her window. For what? said Flora. It wasn't the worst poetry I'd ever, oh, said Flora, that I had ever heard. Also, I'm sorry I wouldn't take my glasses off when you asked me to. Take them off now, then, said Flora. I can't, said William Spiver. They've been glued to my head by the evil forces beyond my control. You lie, said Flora. Yes, no, I don't. I do. I'm emerging hyperbole. It seems as if the glasses have been glued to my head. He lowered his voice. Actually, I'm afraid that if I take my glasses off, the whole world will unravel. That's stupid, said Flora. There are bigger things to worry about. For instance... She realized that she was going to say something to William Spiver that she hadn't intended to say. The words were out of her mouth before she could not stop them. Do you know what an arch nemesis is? She whispered. Of course I do. William Spiver whispered back. Right, said Flora. Well, Ulysses has got one. It's my mother. William Spiver's eyebrows rose up above his dark glasses. Flora was pleased to note that he looked properly surprised and shocked. Speaking of Ulysses, said Tootie, I have some poetry that I would like to recite to him. Are you sure that now is the time for poetry recitation? said William Spiver. Ulysses sat up straighter in his Bootsy Boots shoebox. He looked at Tootie. He nodded. I was moved by your poetry, said Tootie to the squirrel. Ulysses puffed out his chest. And I have some poetry that I would like to recite to you in honor of the recent, um, transformations in your life. Tootie put a hand on his chest. This is Rilke, she said. You sent out beyond your recall. Go to the limits of your longing. Embody me. Flare up like a flame and make big shadows I can move in. Ulysses stared up at Tootie, his eyes bright. Flare up like a flame, said Flora's father from the front seat. That is moving, yes. That is quite lovely. Flaring up like a flame, thanks so much. We have to be on our way now. But will you return, said William Spiver. Flora looked up and saw William Spiver's words hanging in the air above him like a small, tattered flag. But will you return? I'm spending this afternoon with my father, William Spiver said. It's not like I'm heading off to the South Pole. Terrible things can happen to you had done an extreme, extensive piece on what to do if you were standing at the South Pole. Their advice could be summed up in three simple words. Eat seal blubber it was astonishing really what people could live through flora felt cheered up all of a sudden just thinking about eating seal blubber and doing impossible things surviving when the odds were against her and her squirrel 
they would figure out a way to outwit the arch nemesis. They would triumph over the shovel and the sack. And they would triumph together, like Dolores and Incandesto. I'm glad, said William Spiver, I'm glad that you're not going to the South Pole, Flora Bell. Flora's father cleared his throat. George Buckham, he said, how do you do? It was nice to meet you, sir, said William Spiver. Remember those words, said Tootie. Flare up like a flame, said Flora's father. I was speaking to the squirrel, said Tootie. Of course, said Flora's father. My apologies, the squirrel. I will see you again, said William Spiver. Beware the arch nemesis, said Flora. I will see you again, said William Spiver. We're off to fight evil, said Flora, as her father backed the car out of the driveway. William Spiver waved at the car. I will see you again. He seemed so stuck on the idea, seeing her again, and Flora didn't have the heart to tell him that he was waving in the wrong direction.